Hey, I'm Brian. I'm Kayleen. And today we're going to be teaching you how to grow vegetables at home in pots. We're going to be showing you from start to finish, showing what pot to use, what soil to use and what fertilizer to use. That's right. And we're going to do in episode two, we're going to teach you how to set up an irrigation system that's fully automated so you won't miss out on watering. And then we'll show you how to keep your plants safe from all the pests and do it organically. That's good because a lot of things are going to try and eat what you grow because it tastes good. We're also going to be looking at composting. We're going to be looking at how you know what to sow when, how to grow from seed in a propagator. We're going to go through the whole lot and we're going to finish up by cooking some of the things we've been growing. So it's going to be a full on course. Grab your notepad, grab your pen and let's get stuck into it. Now growing in pots can sometimes be a little bit tricky because the pots dry out very fast. And here's the tip, the larger the pot, the easier it is for the plants to retain that moisture in the soil. True. So often you'll see pots, uh, even at uh, some of the nurseries, you'll hmm. see you'll buy a, a potted like yep. this and they're tiny. And uh, in nurseries, it's fine because they've got automated irrigation systems that are watering it every day. <laughs> But at home, we want to have it so that the plants will grow and not get stressed too much. So we yep. have much larger pots like these ones here. That is correct. Now, these are <laughs> our black geofelt planters that we're growing in. And we've got thousands of customers using these and getting great results. What are some of the key things about these planters over other pots? Well, their name gives it away. The geofelt right. is from a, a nice thick material that is great, that is drains freely so the water can drain out with no holes in the bags, but it just naturally drains out. And what was the other feature you said about the roots? The geofelt is yeah. great for the roots because it lets the roots able to breathe, which actually stops your root bound happening. You know how pots, sometimes you take them out of a pot to replant into a bigger pot and they're all circled Spiraling, around. That's right. So yeah, yes. so it prevents that, which is fabulous. Um, it's also got two awesome handles on the side with strong double stitching so that um, if you grab a friend, you can move these around. So if you need to move it into a better spot that's more sunny, you can yeah, grab a friend and move it where you need it. It's also got UV stable stitching, so it means the sun's not going to um, break it down so they'll stay strong for a long time. Excellent. Yeah. It's got a lot of good features and if you have a look at the reviews on our website you'll see that people are raving about how well the plants are growing. Now Kayleen, what Kayleen mentioned about the root bound is when you have a hard pot the roots reach the edge because they're, mm. they're searching yep. and then they start going oh I've hit the edge I can't go any further so they go I'll go left or I'll go right and they yes. just keep going round and round and round. It's not good for the plant. No. Whereas here they reach towards the edge the fabric breathes so the roots can sense there's air out there and goes I don't want to hit air and so they stop growing in that direction and so what you get is a much healthier root system in these plants that isn't root bound. Yes. So what have we got growing in these ones here? The other thing too I didn't mention is it's nice and deep so you can grow lots of different things so you can grow your your root vegetables like your carrots and stuff which we've got in this one um, but you can also grow lovely things like this one here we've got the lovely mint parsley and the chives so there's our little herb garden and then you've got your essential um, spinach which you need in every household because we need our greens to stay healthy well, greens <laughs> gives us what Gives us dark green gives us iron. Iron, magnesium, iron. gives you lots of things. It's a brilliant. little tip to get the greens, the iron to absorb uh, well, what should you have with it? Some vitamin C. That's so right. you can have your orange juice, your pineapple juice, whatever, yeah. but not too much juice. Yeah, not mm. too much, because it is acidic. Yes. But having orange juice will actually <laughs> help that iron absorb into your bloodstream. Yes. All right, so that's an important one. So we've got uh, spinach over here. Now there's another version of spinach, isn't there, that we often grow in Australia. Yes. Good old silver beet grows nice and fast and quick. Yeah, and, it's um, a yeah. great one to start with because yeah. it's easy to grow yes. and it has the same kind of flavor as uh, spinach. So you can substitute that one. Whereas spinach itself generally only grows in the winter months, doesn't really cope in the summer months. Mm. So that's where silver beet is good. Yes. Now, what have we got over here in this one here? I'm going to take the uh, cover off here. This is called the pest free uh, mini, mini cover and we'll talk about that a bit more very soon. So we've got some carrots, carrots growing in this, in this one. one. 
Uh, now with carrots, obviously you need them to grow nice and long and you need nice soft soil, otherwise you're gonna get all crooked carrots, like everyone's. No growing. stones. No, no stones, stones in the mix as well. <laughs> so we'll, we'll check in here. We've got it, there's a carrot there. This one looks promising, good. the biggest ones. You never know what you're gonna get when you pull this out. There you go. Nice. Look, it's not a huge, but it's no. got potential, hasn't it? It would taste good. It would nice still taste sweet. good, that's right. Little ones are sweet. Very good. <laughs> reminds reminds me of my schooling. My teachers used to say I had a lot of potential. Potential. Okay. Very hidden. Mm, Deeply very, hidden potential. Very, very hidden. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll put that one over there. So let's move over to the table. Yes. And we're going to fill one of these bags up Feels with like some potty mix and show how much it takes. Cool. All right. And we've got a whole lot of goodies here to start with. We do. We'll get one of the GFL planters. This is how they come to you, like yep. this. And they are a 100 litre size bag. Nice. Uh, nice and big. Nice and big, that's right. Plenty. Now, most vegetables actually only need about 30 centimetres deep. Mm -hmm. So, but there's actually a benefit of having it deeper because then you get more of a water reservoir happening yeah. in the rest of the soil that's below that. It's not going to dry out as quick. Yeah. Especially yeah. in summer. Okay. So, to fill this, we're going to need 100 litres of potting mix. Okay. Now, your standard bag of potting mix is 25 litres. Yep. So, just like this one here. Okay. Ooh. So, you're going to need four of those bags to fill one of these here. Now, what's the difference between potting mix and garden soil? A lot of people don't know there's actually a big difference between the two. I'll tell you what it is. This <laughs> bag here, I weighed it before on the scales, weighs eight kilos and it's damp potting mix. This one here of garden soil weighs 13 kilos and it's the same size bag, the same volume, so 25 much litres. Lighter. So much lighter. <laughs> now, why is that of benefit? It means that when you fill this up with 100 uh, litres in here, it means that you can still lift it and carry it around. Mm. The handles on these bags are with weight friend, tested. With, with a friend, With a friend, that's right. It's a two-person lift. Unless you're like Dwayne Johnson or something. Unless you're, you're like not... me. That's what she was going to say. I don't know. <laughs> okay, she yeah. didn't. All right, hidden potential. <laughs> so we're going to fill this up. So you need to fill it with potting mix, not garden soil, which is too heavy. Okay. okay so we'll put this one to the side. Yeah. Now, well, I one. should explain why garden soil is so heavy. I will explain that. Oh. It's got sand and loam in it, and they're the heavy. two things that weigh it. Yeah. Whereas this one's got a lot of bark, which is all composted down, which is much lighter. Nice. So pour it in, Brian? Yes. Awesome. Now, on the potting mix bags, it does tell you to wear a mask, okay? Mm. But because we're presenting, we're not wearing the masks, and we made sure that the um, potting mix is nice and damp, so it's not blowing around. Uh, in the breeze and we're not breathing it in. Do you want to fill it up completely yes, with all the Yes, we're going bags? to fill okay. that in. Ooh. Now you might find this easier to do this on the ground, so you already got it down at ground level, but it's a bit hard for us to film that, so we're just going to do it on the table here. <laughs> now which brand of potting mix should you buy? It doesn't really matter. Don't get the very cheapest ones. I've found from experience that sometimes the mix in there is just basically rubbish. It's bad compost or it's uh, like some of them have just been appalling. They're not even really a potting mix. So get something that's got a decent brand, you know, Yates or an Osmocote or a Debco or something. They will also have inside them uh, already built in is slow release fertilizer and a wetting agent. And I'll talk more about why those two are important. All right, this bag must have been a bit wet. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> that is wet. <laughs> there we go. Last one. Just break this one up a bit. There we go. And you pour that one in. That bag was probably at the bottom of the pile. I think it was. It was <laughs> a bit <squashed>. compressed. <laughs> it was squashed. There we go. So you might need not, not need the full bag into this one. Okay. We're going to go just a few centimetres from the top. But it does compact a bit over time, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It'll settle. I think we'll put it all in, Brian. Going to fit it all in? Yep. Okay, tip it in. should have had our gloves on, Brian. We should. Aren't we bogans? <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah, we get dirt under our fingernails. Can't invite us out to dinner. But you can chuck these. <laughs> we'll put our gloves on. Uh, 
Well, they look so white. It's right. unusual for me to have Too such clean. white gloves. <laughs> you just got the new pack out, didn't mm. we? <laughs> we did. Gloves that we have come in three different sizes. Uh, the yellow rims are the large size, which is the men's size. They do stretch a bit as well. Kayleen uh, wears the medium, which is the brown rim. And then we have a small hands version, which is the purple rim. So yes. the rims are just around the edge here. Uh, you'll see them. So you can get those on our website. Or website. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Usually where it's so at. we've filled that up. <laughs> it wasn't too difficult to do that. Let's look at the economics of this though. Is that those four bags cost roughly about ten to twelve dollars each, I think. So we're looking at about forty to fifty dollars uh, worth of soil in one of these bags. Okay. So that can add up. Now, if you've only got one or two to fill, that's probably the way to do it. Yeah. But the best way is if you've got several to fill, if you're doing five or 10 of these planters to set up your own little veggie patch in mm. pots, is to get a load of soil delivered from your local soil yard. So here's enough. a little shot where we got the soil delivered earlier today, and we're gonna be filling the bags up uh, the rest of the time with that, rather than getting all the plastic ones and all that plastic waste as well. Yep, okay. sounds good. So we've got our seedlings over here. What are we putting in there today, Brian? Well, we'll have to work that out. Now. You can get seedlings from your local nurseries. They do cost a bit, probably five, six, seven dollars. Uh, you can like also grow ones? them yourself as well. And we're going to teach you in one of our future episodes how to sow the seeds and grow the seedlings like this. These ones here are in growing in our little propagators here. We've got a bit of a salad mix happening in there. Yep. And then uh, we've got some spinach in that one as well. I think there's a couple of tomato plants. So we might, um, nice. we might just grab one of these here and we'll plant up this one as a bit of a salad lettuce. Wow. Sounds good. Okay. Coming warmer season so we can have some more salads again. That's right. Mm. Need a lot of those. So especially with the price of lettuce has been over the last couple of years, hasn't True. it? You know, True. we could make money from this. You could. We'll put our lettuce out the front. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to tip that out. Now what I do is I squeeze the pot a little bit like this and then I'm tipping it into my hand. Now, nurseries nowadays put a lot more seeds into all their pots and things when you buy mm. the seedlings. Yeah. So you really have to tease those apart. Now, if they're really nat netted together, matted together, I should say, you can soak this in water so that the soil drops away and then you can easily pull them apart. This one doesn't really need it. So I'm just gonna gently pull them apart. Already naturally falling apart into four. Yeah. Space them out. Now in uh, our veggie uh, nursery kit that's for well, growing in pots we have the top 14 seeds and one of the seeds that we provide is for a uh, loose leaf lettuce just like this one here it's great because you can just keep harvesting keep picking. It. Yep. yeah not like the iceberg lettuce where you gotta wait for it to get nice and big and then you cut it off yeah and sometimes you get problems with the iceberg lettuce they end up rotting in the center if there's too much rain which can be hard to control okay plenty of that so we might bring the close-up <laughs> camera in and we'll have a little look at putting these seedlings in. So I've got that in my hand. I've kept some of the soil on there. There's the roots and we're just gonna put it here. I'm digging a hole with my fingers. And I'm just gonna plant that seedling in there. And you always keep the, the soil level of where the plant is, is where the soil level that you plant it in. So you don't yeah. bury it deeper and you don't sit it above the soil. We don't wanna bury the leaves is yeah. what you mean. Yes. So we'll just separate this one here. You have to be very gentle with this. There we go. It's not too hard to do. It's actually quite therapeutic, this part of it. It is, especially nice soil. No yeah. digging involved. <laughs> Much easier, isn't it? Yeah. Now I'm planting them around the edge and I'm, I'm planting them about 10 centimetres in from the actual edge. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll explain why we're going to do that. It's because we're going to have our irrigation sitting in the middle and it's going to spray out towards these plants here. Mm -hmm. And so we want the water to hit those plants nicely just inside. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Doing a great job, babe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Doing a great job of watching. Yeah. <laughs> now, because these are a loose leaf a lettuce, um, you don't have to worry too much about spacing. You can plant them fairly close together because mm. uh, they're not going to grow too big. They'll figure themselves out. There we go. So they're all planted in there. 
this. It's a good idea if you're not, if you're new to growing, you probably should get some labels and put a label in just to say what you've planted. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, otherwise you might have some mystery plants growing yeah, there. Yeah, that's occasionally happened at our household. Like things like celery that looks a little bit similar to parsley and in the middle of the night I go out and grab some and go back in and I'm like, that is not parsley. That's not parsley, it's <laughs> celery. Celery leaves. It's like a really crunchy kind Different of Different flavour completely. Okay. <laughs> So we've filled our bag up. I'm going to leave the center open for our irrigation to go. And that one is ready. So how cool. about we carry that over and we'll put it down onto that last spot over there. So we'll use the handles. And take it over. Beautiful. Very good. And the most important thing is that we need to water this in straight, straight away. Because yes. already the plants are um, having the moisture being sucked out of them from the dryish soil. It's even got moisture on it, but it's still yeah. a bit dry. So we'll grab our hose and we'll give this one a water. A good tip though, Brian, is to water the actual soil first. Yes, that's a, that's a good method as well. You get yes. a bit messy when you're doing it, but, uh, but we can do that. it's less stress on the plant. And then you water it in. Yep. Yes. Let's grab that hose. And just check um, the temperature of your water before you uh, start watering in yeah. case it's been sitting in the sun. You don't want to scald them. Very important. <laughs> and let it run for a bit because sometimes the first bit's okay, but then a few seconds later, it will be stinking hot, especially in summer. Here's the one I wanted. Yeah, that's nice and cool. Do you want to test it? No, thanks. No. Oh. <laughs> and give it a nice thorough watering because we want that water to really soak through all of that soil. Yeah. A good rule of thumb is a good eight, nine seconds or more. Oh, yeah, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, probably the first time you mm. do it. After mm. that, it's probably only um, five or six seconds that it needs with a good. Yeah. This is one of our Aussie Gardener Dream Hose here we're using. Nice. It's got the gun included on that, makes it very easy. All right, so let's put the pest free cover over the top mm -hmm. because it'll create just a little bit of shade to protect those seedlings. And the next thing we're going to do is swap over and we're going to fill up one of the geofelts with the soil that we got from the soil yard this morning and okay. talk about what the difference is compared to the bag soil. Now we had this pile of soil delivered earlier today. This is one cubic meter, which is enough to fill 10 of these GFL planters. Cool. Now remember before I said with the potting mix, it was gonna cost 40 or $50 per bag to fill the yes. planters. Yep. Well, with this, this whole load here costs, I think $180 and we're doing 10. So you can see it's a lot cheaper to get the soil delivered from your local yard. And remember to ask them for a potting mix. And just something to keep in mind is the potting mix won't already have um, your slow release fertilizers yep. or the wetting Very agent ancient. in it. So we need to add those in and we're gonna show you how to do that in a minute. So let's fill this bag up. Cool. There we go. In Let's give it a drop. So lift and drop. I think we need to put a bit more in there. Go for it, Brian. So we're filling it pretty close to the top because the soil is going to settle once we start to water it. Now those two things that I mentioned before that won't be in this potting mix from the soil yard is the fertilizer and the wetting agent. Uh, so let's have a look at what they are for. Now fertilizer is pretty obvious because it's going to be for feeding the plant. Yeah. Um, now slow release fertilizer, the way it has, it's got lots of coatings on it, little balls, like little pearls, and each layer of the coating gradually breaks down over time and gradually feeds it back to the plant. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot easier way to fertilize using slow release fertilizers and low risk of actually burning the plants from over fertilizer. Sure. Okay, so we're going to be using the Ferticoat here. Uh, for this size um, bag, we need, I think about, uh, I think it was five teaspoons mm -hmm. here. Now in reality, where the plants are only going to be growing in the top kind of section here. So we probably don't need that much. So we might do two and a half, I think for this. 
uh, space here. And just a question, Brian, does it matter what, how much to what plant you're planting in there? Like, you know, yeah, not too not much too because much we're using an all purpose fertilizer here. So rather than a fruit and flower. Okay. So this one's just generally going to help the roots and the um, leaves to grow. Gotcha. If you're growing something like say tomatoes or a fruiting vegetable, you'd probably be better to swap over to a Ferticoat uh, fruit and flower uh, mm -hmm. because it will actually have more potassium in it um, and uh, phosphorus as well, which will help with those fruit sets. Mm. Okay, so we'll put that in. So I'm going to put Sprinkle that round. Now you can just sprinkle this on the surface of the soil. It will still work, but we're gonna dig it in a little bit. And the plants are gonna seek that out. And then the other thing that we're going to be adding is um, this is water crystals. Uh, these are very clever if you haven't seen these before. They mm. will bring the close-up camera in, just have a look at these. I'll put some on my hand. So they're kind of like large grains of sand is what they look like here. And then when you put them in water, they turn into kind of like jelly uh, here. They expand to be much larger and all that is water. So we, we sprinkled that in there, poured water in there, and now all the water has been soaked up by these. And the great thing about that is that we put that in the soil, the plant's roots will seek out these little balls of jelly and suck the water back out again. So each time you water, they'll expand, then the plants will draw that water and then they'll shrink again, and then they'll expand every time you water again. So very important to keep the container dry when you're doing it, <laughs> speaking from experience, <laughs> otherwise it all expands. So uh, the amount we're gonna put in here, it says to put in uh, one gram of this per, uh, ki uh, so per liter of soil. So we've got 100 liters here. So in theory, you should be putting 100 grams of this. Now the container is 500 grams. I know that that's gonna be too much for this. So what we're gonna do is probably put about 50 grams so that we get uh, one container, we'll do 10 of these kind of pots. Couple of pinches of your handful. Yeah, kind of a handful in there. Keep putting the, keep wanting to plant the leaves, Brian. I might put a little <laughs> bit more in. It's important that you mix it through, otherwise you're going to have jelly, big globs of jellies, sticking out of your potting mix. Yeah, and they don't do much good on the surface, so you want them on the, in the soil. Yeah, in the soil would be better. For the roots. Okay, so now we've uh, put those things and there's one more thing that we should put in as well, mm -hmm. and that is a wetting agent. So this is wetter soil. Now, you may have experienced this before is that um, in Australia's conditions where we don't have rain all the time, the soil can dry out and it becomes what they call hydrophobic. And so that means it's repelling water rather than soaking it in. You know those times where you're watering and the water just seems to run across the ground rather than actually soaking into the ground? So what we use is a wetting agent. It's kind of like a detergent when you're washing up. Yep. And so this is in granular form. We mix this in with the soil and you'll notice that when you water, it'll kind of suds up a little bit yep. like detergent and it makes the water stick to that soil. Now the potting mixes in the bag will already have these items included. They won't have the water crystals generally, but they will have the wetting agent and the fertilizer already included in there. But what we're saying is it's good if you've got several of these to fill, get it from the local soil yard and add these two items to yep. it. So let's open this up and we'll add some of this in. Okay. And I'm just gonna put a handful and you sprinkle that onto the surface rather than yep. uh, mixing it in because the water's gonna hit the surface and then the, it's gonna soak in. Once you want to. <laughs> and this product just, all these products actually just um, break down into the soil, they biodegrade into the soil. Nice. Now the other option is if you wanna grow uh, just organically, um, rather than using one of these man-made fertilizers here, you may be better off to use one of the Amgro Naturals, which is like <laughs> a manure based kind of pellet. Smells fresh. Yes, oh, <laughs> smell that, look at that. So there's other brands like uh, Dynamic Lifter is kind of similar. With these ones here, they're getting a little bit more advanced now and they have a complete fertilizer. So 
They're generally manures are gonna be rich in nitrogen, which is what produces most of your leafy growth. Whereas mm -hmm. when you get an all-purpose fertilizer, it will also have potassium and phosphorus in there as well, which is good for your roots and your flowers. But the only thing you've got to be careful of that is it can sometimes burn your little baby plants. That's right. right. So yeah. I probably wouldn't put it on for new seedlings. Yeah. Um, and you need to really well uh, water, water it in well. well. So it's not like a slow release like the other one. So is. more when your plant's a little bit more established just to give it a bit more growth. Yeah. Okay. So let's put some other um, plants in. We're going to go with a uh, silver beet silver this time. Beet. So that's, yeah. this is the silver beet here. And this is another one of the uh, top 14 plants we recommend for growing in pots, which is part of our um, veggie nursery kit you'll see on the website. This is a pretty red one. I'm going to take it has my a nice red stalks. So the most common one you see the white stalks, but this has red. Something different. <laughs> if you have chooks, they love this. Stuff. They love silver beet. Love silver beet. So I would recommend, we actually grow several beds in our main veggie patch. Mm. Uh, and we have two spare we ones. We eat a lot, but just we need for the some chooks. for the chooks. <laughs> yeah. Just a little tip, don't let your chooks out into the veggie patch without it being covered. It'll be nothing Destroy left. Destroy everything. <laughs> well, Kayleen, you finished off planting those and I'll show everybody what else we've been growing in the Black sure. GFL planters as well. So over here, this one's a bit more of an interesting one that I recommend you grow. It's a good one to add into your salads and it's called French sorrel. Now this particular one has the red vein leaf in it, which looks really attractive. If we come in with the camera and have a look at the patterns on these, aren't they beautiful? Now French sorrel, it's important to pick the leaves when they're young, uh, cause that's when they're nicest to eat. And they'll have a lemon kind of flavor in the center kind of stem along here. Probably shouldn't eat it while I'm presenting because then it's stuck in my mouth. But this is really good to add a few leaves into your salads as something that people go, what's that lemon flavor from? It also comes in the non-red vein version, the normal French sorrel as well. In this one here, we've got um, various lettuces growing and we've got a rocket here as well. The good thing about growing organically is that you can go out to the veggie patch and just pick leaves off and eat them because you know there's no sprays or chemicals being used. And then we come over to this one here. This is our um, cabbages. Now normally cabbages would have uh, all their leaves being chewed through from the white cabbage moth. But by simply growing up them under the pest-free covers, we've eliminated that problem and we no longer need to use any sprays on these. You can see how healthy they are. This one here, we've got garlic growing. Now garlic's a slow crop, so it'll take you about nine months for these to mature. So they've got a fair way to go still. And then our last one here is our Mediterranean herbs. And so on the left-hand side, we've got thyme. And then on the right-hand side, we've got oregano. Great to put into your spaghetti sauces. Let's head back to Kayleen and see how she's going. Looking good, Kay. Okay, this one's ready to go over. We're gonna put this one over onto the decking. Now I've set up a bit of a sample area here mm -hmm. to try and show people that you can have these GF felts positioned on various different um, materials. Yep. So on our uh, right hand side, we've got them on paving. Yes. Uh, and then we've got another one over here on mulch yes. and then another one on gravel. And this one we're gonna put on the decking. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, what about the decking? Is it gonna damage the decking because the water leaks out the base? Now, mm -hmm. if there's constant moisture in contact with your decking, that's not ideal. So what we're gonna do instead, it's too hard to get a large saucer. We're just gonna use a sheet of like black builder's plastic cut into a circle. So then when the water runs through the base, it's gonna hit that plastic sheet and then it has to go off the edge because it can't go any other mm -hmm. direction and it'll just run through the gaps in the deck. So let's take this one over and set that up. Go. So it's a simple solution to protect the deck is just using that sheet of builder's uh, plastic, black plastic, which you get from your hardware. And you can see we've cut it into a circle. We've made it a bit bigger than the actual bag so you can see it in the video easy, but you can cut it up right close to the bag. And then the water will go through the bag, it will hit the plastic and then go out the sides and go through the cracks. And just to demonstrate this, we've watered this bag quite well. Um, so we're gonna lift this off and we should see all the moisture sitting on top of the plastic. 
lifting. Yeah. So you can see all the moisture's held there and if there's any excess, it'll go off the edge and down through the cracks. But the deck underneath remains nice and dry. Now to finish off this class, it wouldn't be a veggie patch without the humble spud. So we're gonna be planting up some potatoes in our potato bags here. Now when farmers grow potatoes, they grow them in the ground in the fields. And as the plant grows, they pile the soil up onto the potatoes to keep them out of the light. What I learned recently though, which I found was a bit disappointing and a little scary actually is to get the, uh, the potatoes ready for harvest, they need them to all, basically, the plants to die off at the same time. Mm. What do you think they spray the plants with? I don't want to know. Oh, yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> so they spray it with a, a desiccant, uh, which is unfortunately usually glyphosate. <gasps> Sorry. So they spray the potato plants. This is how crazy. They spray the potato Biogenical. plants. Biogenical. No, grow with, your own. With glyphosate, which kills off the plant, and then they can harvest all the potatoes at once. Oh my god. Rather gosh. than waiting for individual plants to die off separately. Because what happens with potatoes is it goes through their whole growing process, and then the plant will die off, and that's how you know that it's time to harvest mm. them. Mm. Now, we're using potato wow. bags, which are made of GFL, which is the same GFL as our black GFL planters. The only difference is, this is a dark gray compared to the black, and this one has a side pocket in it. And the reason we do that is so that you can harvest some of the potatoes as they're growing, rather than wait until the end. So you can kind of steal them as they go. One person said to me, it's called bandicooting, apparently. That's the official term, bandicooting. Mm. And so here's our flap on the side. And you'll see I've got some soil already in there. And you can imagine we've got the potatoes growing in there. You can rummage your hands in there, grab a few potatoes uh, and start cooking with those. Now the large potato bag has two flaps, one on either side, because we found it was too hard to reach in from one side only. Mm. And the small one has just, just the one the flap on the front here. Now to grow potatoes, it's really easy. We just put about a quarter of the bag full of potting mix. Uh, just pour it into there. And then we're going to plant our seed potatoes. Now you can buy seed potatoes from the nurseries. They'll come in packs like this. Or you can use potatoes from your cupboard. We'll talk about the two reasons there. Do you know why you use seed potatoes over potatoes from your cupboard? No, enlighten me. Enlighten me. It's, <laughs> it's basically because if you grow them from the ones in your cupboard, they may have come from a field where there was a virus already in that potato or crop. Or they sprayed them with some of that glyphosate. Or they sprayed it, yes. <laughs> Kayleen's still thinking about yeah, the glyphosate. Yeah, I'm horrified, sorry. <laughs> And so if you buy seed potatoes, they're basically guaranteed to be disease or virus free. Mm. Uh, so you're gonna get healthy spuds. Now, if you're growing potatoes in the ground, that's really important because you don't want them to have virus because it will spread through your soil and yes, you'll never be able to true. get rid of it, okay? True. But if you are growing in bags, it's probably not too bad of an issue if you do happen to strike a potato that's got a virus because if it starts to grow bad or the potatoes are brown and yucky in the center, Get the whole bag, tip all the soil out into your landfill bin, and then wash the bag out and then start again with fresh soil. You can't do that in your old garden. No. So we're gonna use seed potatoes today. Um, a company in Tassie uh, makes a lot of seed potatoes and they're called agronica.com.au. So you can look them up. They do a fantastic job. A lot of our customers buy from them. Now there's all different varieties of spuds. Some are great for baking, others are more designed for mashing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I chose the one, I like baked potatoes, so I chose the ones that are good oh. for a bit of baking. <laughs> all right, and so you wanna grab those out. Now seed potatoes are generally fairly small. Mm -hmm. And you can cut these up if you want to. You get a lot of seed potatoes in a bag, but all you need is the eyes, which are the little kind of growing bits on each potato here. They're the bit the shoots come out of. Yeah. So if you wanted to cut these up into pieces to make them go further, you could do that. Just important to leave them to dry for about 24 hours before you plant them. Otherwise they'll tend to go rotten when they're in the soil. Mm -hmm. Now this large potato bag here, we're gonna put, um, I think we'll put six seed potatoes in and this one here we could probably put three seed potatoes okay. in put those so we'll, back. we'll grab those out and we'll look at the close-up camera with this and we'll be able to see that they're just going into the soil just below the surface so you can't see them so there's nothing too fancy about it you just got to put them into the soil now you're going to water them once 
because we don't want to overwater them at this stage because they'll tend to rot. Yes. And you have a smelly potato, it's not going to grow. Yeah. You'll start to see leaves coming out of the ground and then it will start to grow stems. Once it grows to about, oh, say, 12 centimetres high, then you're going to add more soil and cover up to here and just have the top two leaves that are showing. It's going to feel funny because you feel like you're burying the plant. <laughs> so just leave the top two leaves showing because the potatoes are going to grow along that stem. And so that's why we're burying it and covering oh. them over. We're going to use two different methods though. So on our um, potato bag packs, it talks about using the soil layering method like I just described to you. But the other method you can do is fill the bag just with the soil. And then as the plants grow, you can add hay or straw. And there's obviously nothing growing in here yet. But once these are growing, we'll just pack this in around the plants and we'll show it in a future episode so you'll be able to see what we're doing. It doesn't really need the soil all the way up to the top because the, the base soil is what's providing enough of the nutrients and the roots. The straw is really just going to hold, give them stability. It's just going to so um, give them layering. So the potatoes grow in the straw. That's right. The potatoes are going to grow in okay. the straw. Now, the purpose of the straw is to give them like shelves, kind of layers for them to grow in. Sure. And it's also stopping the sunlight from hitting the potatoes because you all know you mm. can't eat a green potato because it's very poisonous. And that's because the sunlight gets to them and that's why you need to store them in the cupboard. Mm. So we're going to check back in on these later on uh, and we'll be able to see our spuds growing and maybe have a peek in the side and see if we can see any of them and we'll steal them or bandicoot them. So pretty easy. Get yourself some potato bags from the Aussie Gardener website. Makes it a whole lot easier to grow spuds at home. Now, to finish off this segment, we've had a lot of things we've gone through. We've gone through our soil. We've got our planter bags. We've got our areas set up. You can set it up on gravel or on the timber, like I said, with the plastic or on your pavers. It can go on concrete. I'm trying to cover all the options because we get all these usual questions. Where can I sit them? but this has got to be the fastest and easiest way to set up a veggie patch at your place. So I encourage you to get like a five pack or a 10 pack, find a spot that has plenty of sun. Mm. Ideally, it's facing north, which yeah. is where you're going to get the most amount of sunlight. If you're in a garden that doesn't have much sunlight, you might be a bit more limited to the vegetables that don't produce a fruit or a root. So for example, your spinach or your lettuce or your silver beet, they'll grow in part shade, but everything else really needs lots of sun. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. That's all from us. The next one we're gonna talk about is irrigation and setting up an automated irrigation system so it's all happy and growing. Awesome. See you later. Bye.